الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد والثناء لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين المنتجبين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرباح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء وَلَعَنَتُ على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين. For the hastening and the return of our Imam, please recite the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It is my honor and pleasure to be with my brothers and sisters here in this community and hopefully with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the course of the next couple, two weeks approximately that we're going to be together. I hope that we'll both, or all of us, would be able to, inshallah, enjoy the blessings of the month of Ramadan with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The month of Ramadan is a very, very blessed and important month. Usually, what happens. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us blessings is that many times we allow the blessing to come and to go and we don't benefit from it the way we could have. There's a lot of blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us. We take for granted. Once it's gone, then we look back. Sometimes we realize how great the blessing was. For example, when we are not ill when we are healthy when we don't have any disease any illness that's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we have a small little illness well you know it goes away pretty quick when we have a more difficult one a more difficult one something that takes long we start realizing the blessing of having our health to a certain extent and then, of course, the problem is then when we get it back, then we forget again. That's another problem. But sometimes we don't even realize and understand the blessings, the opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us even after they're done. One of them is, unfortunately, the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is a very, very important month in our personal development. It's a month that we can reach a proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a certain perfection that cannot be reached in other months of the year. A very, very special month. We don't take advantage of this month. There are many blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in this month. We have hadith that says the shaqi, a person who is very misfortunate, is the one that this month comes, they enter the month, and they leave the month, they're not even able to have their sins forgiven. Okay, the very least we can get. Say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for excuses in this month to forgive any little thing any little thing. At night time they say the angels are announcing, making that announcement. Who would want to be forgiven? Who wants to be relieved from hellfire? So it's very, very unfortunate if we come and the month of Ramadan comes to an end and unfortunately we haven't even been able to accomplish that. It's important that we take advantage, we understand the importance of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us so we can benefit from it in the right way. If we don't understand the importance of it, we don't benefit from it that much. That's why the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the 
last Friday of Sha'ban, he would give a lecture to the people, talk to them about the month of Ramadan. He would say, for instance, that the month of God is coming to you. All the months of the year belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single day, every single minute, every single second, all of that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything in this world belongs to Allah. All of it. But the reason why he refers to it as his month is because out of all of them, he likes and prefers this month beyond all. And one of the nights only, according to the verse of the Holy Quran and in that saying of the Holy Prophet, that only one night in this month is better than, not even equal, better than a thousand months. So hopefully we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us, to help us, if we haven't been able to take advantage of this month up to this point, if we haven't been able to take advantage of the night time, of the time of suhoor, or the actual time which is sahar, before fajr, if we're only getting up and spending time to eat, and not spending time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to Him, to pray to Him. A very, very beneficial time that, as the verse of the Holy Quran says, Asa ayyabataka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. If we are able to get up at that time of the night and spend 20, 30 minutes only, there minimum, with Him. But we try to do that, inshallah, for the rest of this month. And especially, and especially since we are getting closer and closer to the end of this month, half, half of the month is gone. The nights of Qadr, the nights that we try to spend in A'mal, so that hopefully we're able to benefit from Laylatul Qadr, are going to be approaching. And the last 10 days of this month are days that the Holy Prophet considered so important he moved, he left his house, he took something to sleep on to the masjid and he spent all of the days and nights in the masjid yeah, took off. Right. Hopefully we're able to benefit from this month. There are many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this month, one of the blessings is the obligation of the fast. The hunger, the thirst that we face. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of the blessings that He provides in this month. And He says there's many objectives. In one of the objectives of the fast, which He has mentioned in the Holy Quran, is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ To develop the spirit of taqwa in us. Alright? Taqwa is that important. I'm not going to be focusing too much on that, but read up on your own. Look into it. Look into our lives, how we are living our lives. And the importance of taqwa in our lives, the benefit that it will have in this world and the hereafter. That's one of the benefits. Another of the benefits of Fasting according to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa That he says that you're able to remember the thirst and the hunger on the day of judgment. You read in one of the ahadith as well that was recited one of the youth. And I would like to take this opportunity also to thank the brothers and sisters, the youth who organized this. The program that we saw, the beautiful recitation by the brother, the reading of the translation, which I hope we're able to actually look into and reflect and contemplate. All right, this is the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. I hope we take that time to reflect on the verses. Just reading the translation isn't sufficient for us. We've got to do more. We have to go further and try to understand by reflecting, <coughs> spending time on it. So as we saw there, it says that the Holy Prophet said, it reminds you of the hunger and the thirst on the day of judgment. It's very, very effective in trying to get our acts together. 
the remembrance of death, the remembrance of the day of judgment, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that so many times in the Holy Quran. Very, very descriptive language in describing the punishments, in describing what happens on the day of judgment. He says in, I believe it's Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nas A'udhu billah min shaytan rajim, Ya ayyuha nas Ittahu rabbakum Inna zalzalat al-sa'ati shay'un azim The earthquake that's going to be happening, the quake that we will be feeling. We have not, I don't know how many of you have been in an earthquake. I haven't. We had one little small uh, one in Qum a few years back and it was very very scary okay. a couple of seconds and it was not very strong and you're sitting in that building in your room which you always found, found comfort in and things are shaking uh, there is nowhere to go to escape that because everything is shaking and anything can fall and everything is unstable right. but that earthquake on the day of judgment is going to be severe it's described that the people are going to be running and moving in directions acting like as though they're drunk they don't understand what they're doing they're trying to find a way out they're trying to find an escape route somewhere to hide to find security but it's not there, so they just wonder about this direction, the other direction. They don't know what to do. The remembrance of that is important. So it says that when we fast, one of the other things about, about that day is the thirst and the hunger. The thirst and the hunger, of course, for those who are not believers. All of this is for those who have not done well. Those who have not done well. They have not develop that character of taqwa in them. Thirst and hunger. So remembering that is very beneficial for us in our development. So we, we realize what we are doing a bit more, we pay more attention to that. But another thing that it has, another effect that fasting has is remembering the thirst and the hunger of the needy, those who don't have proper food to have, those who don't have fresh water, they don't have bottled water, they have contaminated water sometimes. They cannot afford, the, or it's not available to them to have nice, cool water that we enjoy. Right. When we have those blessings available to us, then we enjoy them. But we need to realize that not everybody enjoys that. Not everybody is able to enjoy it. And when we fast and we feel that thirst and how it feels, when we feel that hunger and how that feels, and we know we have an option, if thought comes five minutes, all of us, you're going to be grabbing a date, some water, and I hope it's not like that here, but sometimes people eat all the way until Sahar. Okay. <laughs> After, there was this clip, I don't know if you guys have seen on, on YouTube, uh, there's a brother that does it, something about Ramadan, I forget the name of the title of this clip, but one of the things that he says about Ramadan, which is very true, is that the irony of fasting, but gaining weight in the month of Ramadan. Okay. And that's how it is. But we fast, we avoid food, we feel the hunger, but there's a time for that. When if thought time comes, then you can again benefit from that. But there are people that don't have that. In general, there's there's many places in the world. I was reading this they were saying there's an istifta, there's a famine in, in Somalia as well. People are suffering there as well. So I said, okay, if, can we fast if we don't have food for support and for iftar? If we don't have any food at all, is there, can you make that intention of fasting? They don't have food to eat in, for support and they don't have food for iftar as well. Right. 
feeling that and trying to make the effort to help out. I want to spend a few minutes on this, helping out, especially since this program was about orphans. The ones that need and require most help are the orphans. Okay. Is that really the Adam time? I checked it was 8.29. Is that right or is it Adam time? Do you need to cut this short? 8.29. Okay. We got four minutes to three. What we saw of which was not even a glimpse of what an orphan faces. All right. Just imagine yourself when you were a child, when I was a child, the children that are here. You have a bad day at school if you go out and you play. Somebody does something wrong to you. You feel bad. There's always the mother and the father that you can go to for support. You have that home that you feel comfortable in. You, you have your parents that can give you comfort. But an orphan does not have anyone to give them that support. And nothing, nothing can replace that. We take that for granted. We don't, we don't really, sometimes we even have problems with our parents. Okay. We have issues. We don't realize the blessing of having those parents around. God forbid if that blessing is taken from us. We don't have a home that we can go to and feel comfort and ease. That's my, the home that I feel safe, secure. I, I feel relieved when I enter that house. Okay. An orphan does not have that. And nothing can replace it. Nothing can replace it. What we should be doing actually for the orphans is to go and spend time and give them that comfort. Try to give them that care. That's the main item on the list that they are missing. When you were reading, the Holy Prophet used to sit them down on his lap, okay, and put his hand over their head, make them feel that comfort as much as possible, as much as possible. That's what we really have to do. But unfortunately, for different reasons, we're not doing that. Maybe sometimes we're not able to. We can't constantly do that, but I think it's a good idea to try every once in a while to at least do that. But the very, very least that we can do, if we can't replace what they're really missing out of everything, their parents, they don't have that support, the very, very least that we can do is to provide a means to support them so they have proper food, they can have water, they have good shelter, they have good clothing. This is a responsibility that we have. I have a couple more points in regards to that, the importance of that and how that's related to some of the other concepts that we have in Islam, but I'm sure all of you are hungry and thirsty, and the time of Salat is approaching. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the right of the Ahlul Bayt, by the right of the Imam of our time, by the right of the Holy Prophet who grew up as an orphan, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give help and support, sustenance, shelter, food, clothing, Comfort to all the orphans in the world, especially especially the, those belonging to believers and currently the ones that were talked about in Iraq, that we hope that all the brothers and sisters, not thinking this as gener generosity as you know, giving a few dollars, you talked about one dollar can go a long ways. Don't think of one dollar going a long ways. Okay, think of how much you can contribute. Don't think how much that can do and say, oh, one dollar can do a lot. Yeah, one dollar can do a lot, but a thousand dollars can do a lot more. Okay, five thousand dollars can do a lot more. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us remove our love of the dunya and be able to contribute in the right way. 
in the right way and by the right of the Imam that today was his birth Imam Al-Mujtaba who is known as the Karim of the Ahlul Bayt right? the one that was generous generosity is beyond providing for the needs these are the needs that you're providing for generosity is giving beyond that so give whatever you can we ask by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the rights of all of the Ahlul Bayt especially Imam Al-Mujtaba that we celebrated and we're blessed with the anniversary of his birth that he gives us that generosity to be able to give we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of the Ahlul Bayt to hasten the return of our Imam we ask him by the right of the Imam to help us develop ourselves to become true companions and soldiers of our Imam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong the life of him give good health to all of those who are helping the cause of Islam especially the Maraja and especially the leader we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of the Ahlul Bayt to forgive us all of our sins. We ask Him to forgive our parents, our relatives, all believers, those who are alive and those who have passed away of their sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve all the believers of any suffering, pain, difficulty, illness that they may have. We ask Him to grant them their hajats and their needs. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve all the people of the world of the oppressions that they're facing, inshaAllah, bin Nabi wa Ali, rahimallah, man qara'an fatihata ma'as-salawat.